questions will be followed by a brief question and answer section from our audience. Panelists will be able to provide some answers to your questions, and we will have some concluding remarks if time permits. Our first panelist is Ms. Sabine de Batoun, Senator in the Belgian Parliament and Chairwoman of the Flemish Christian Democrat Party in the Senate. From 1999 to 2003, Ms. de Batoun was the first female Vice President of the Senate. Until recently, she was the National President of the Flemish Christian Democrat Party, CD&V Working Group, Women in Society, in which she played a leading role in the attempt for equal opportunities. As a member of the Commission on External Affairs, she gained thorough insights in matters related to development cooperation and international relations. In the Belgian Parliament, she advocates for greater equality between women and men, a sustainable quality of life, and solidarity amongst people. Ms. David Thrun will share with us from her very rich experiences as a politician in Belgium. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Madame la... Madam Special Advisor, Chair of the CSW Distinguished Delegates, this 52nd meeting of the CSW has highlighted a shocking paradox with regard to gender equality. On the one hand, our states have entered into ambitious uh, commitments, the Peking Declaration, CEDAW, etc. But on the other hand, we have been remiss in carrying out these objectives. During these two weeks, we have analyzed what still has to be done. There are many ideas, many strategies, and many good practices have been put forward. And I think that while our delegates in the negotiations are in the process of concluding agreed upon conclusions, it is up to us to think about the follow-up to this meeting. What are we going to take home? What are the ideas we've acquired here? For the past 15 days, and above all, how are we to put them into action? Because beforehand, I was asked or invited to talk about the role of donor countries in cooperation for development and to think about strategies proposed in order better to invest in the future of women and girls. And I would propose five strategic areas with regard to the documents and the meetings we are attending. But first of all, I'd like to ask why there has been this delivery gap between the commitments entered into and the implementation, which has not been enough. As you know, in this type of uh, matter, there are two possible explanations. Either it's a lack of capacity or a lack of commitment. I think that in the current uh, state, I think we could also talk about the lack of resources from do donor countries to fund our programs and the lack of expertise. But I think that the main reason is the lack of political will. And this is the question we should ask today. How are we to see to it that we give further momentum and increase political commitment. There are so many people involved here. There are so many partners around the table, the political and diplomatic world experts and NGOs, that I think that the discussion which took place here in New York should be repeated in each and every one of our countries so that we might be able to mobilize this political will. Democratic pressure, as you know, is the only way to make progress in a political agenda. And this was the first thing I wished to state at this meeting, at this 52nd meeting. Today, along with you, I'd like to think about how we can put into effect the strategies of donor countries in the future. And I've tried to summarize five strategic areas, which I will give to you briefly, and which are put forward for discussion at this meeting. The first point is Madam Moderator, the importance of, for donor states of creating an adequate institutional framework. If we have reflected in national legislation the commitments that we've entered into internationally, in order to make them obligatory and in order to make them concrete, I think 
that my country, Belgium, has some good practices which I can import to you as to how we have a DAME framework be in adopted in 1999 which promotes equality between men and women and which is included in all our programs and projects for cooperation. In following up this law, we have adopted two strategic notes, the global strategy on gender and promoting rights to health and sexual and reproductive rights of women in particular. We have established a commission on women in development, an advisory body which brings together administrations and NGOs and experts. It is a useful tool. And finally, I would like to tell you that we have adopted a law on gender mainstreaming in all areas of Belgian politics. It dates from last year, from 2007. It has not yet been enacted. And henceforth, our government will have to define strategic objectives on gender equality in all areas of policy. And we'll have to provide for gender budgeting and to report to the Parliament every two years on the follow-up to the Peking process. We will implement gender budgeting starting next year, 2009, I hope, whereas many countries which are not partners in development have developed this budgeting in partnership with others and with us, and I think I would like to call upon their expertise to see how we, in our financing, can carry out this budgeting process. This shows that there is cooperation possible and a partnership can take place. It's not just a one-way street. So our first objective was to reflect in our institutional structures international objectives. The second area for strategy is that we have to provide policy resources both in terms of funding and quality. I think we have to do more and better. And today I will talk only about the more. It has been clearly shown by all the documents coming from experts at this conference and by United Nations agencies that more financial resources will be necessary in order to ensure equal opportunity and development. And I think that Millennium Development Goal 3 should be the subject of more efforts and more financing. It is also clear that we don't know how much exactly we are investing in gender mainstreaming and cooperation with development. As you know, there is the gender equality marker of the OECD, but unfortunately, not all the countries are still are yet using it, and among those countries which use it, they don't all use it 100%. Belgium refers to it, but we have not enacted this mechanism in full, and we are still trying to integrate it into our development policy. We still have progress to be done in this area. But thanks to this tool and to our administrations, I can tell you the funds that my country has been investing in cooperation for development, I can tell you that in terms of specific gender equality projects for 2005, for example, we have invested 43 million US dollars. That is 2% of our official development assistance. And if we expand this concept to all the programs where gender is a secondary objector, we have 237 million US dollars. That is 12% of our ODA. I think that this is an important commitment, but that we can do better, just as the international community must do better. And I would like to make a few proposals if we take into account the Monterey Consensus. All the international community has committed itself, the richer the industrialized countries that is, to invest 0.7% of their GDP by the year 2015. And we should think about how Within this objective adopted at Monterey, we could in insert the gender element. I think we have to have objectives given in terms of figures 